Red Bull's RB18 has emerged as the best of the 2022 Formula 1 cars, especially on Sundays, and could arguably the finest the Milton Keynes squad has ever produced. And it's helped Max Verstappen to his second F1 title following Suzuka, keeping the team at the top despite 2022's rule changes. But perhaps the most remarkable aspect is that the team didn't start off with the fastest car, it had to overhaul Ferrari's F175. There is no one magic bullet that explains why the RB18 has proved so effective for the new 2022 rules. Instead, it's a combination of factors, some designed in from the start and others that have been developed. Let's take a look at the RB18's technology. And let's start with the suspension. Red Bull set the tone for the other teams to follow when it came to the overall suspension layout for the 2009 to 2021 era. Ever since 2009's RB5, the team adopted a pull rod rear suspension and push rod at the front. This was considered the best option aerodynamically speaking with regards to the packaging. Having considered the impact of the suspension on the new 2022 cars, Red Bull flipped the script for the new season, opting for a push rod layout at the rear to clear space for the enlarged diffuser and had a pull rod at the front of the RB18. The other interesting feature is that the team continues to use a single wishbone element at the front, albeit this year applied to the top forwardmost arm, as the setup is vertically flipped from before. On the topic of sprung elements, it's worth noting the RB18's bib tray setup. In Red Bull's case, this comes in the form of a Belleville spring instead of other options used by rivals, such as damper, coil springs, or leaf springs. And this Belleville spring results in two benefits, to more compact insulation and less vibration, something that's worth noting considering Red Bull's lack of porpoising and bouncing compared with its rivals. We can also see the RB18's bib features a number of beams and internal stays for added support, helping to reduce how much the floor flex is under load. Moving back a bit, the floor and the diffuser's performance has become even more vital with the inclusion of Venturi tunnels and the added sensitivity to ride height changes. Red Bull opted not to use the allowable edge wing like some of its rivals, and instead took inspiration from 2021's Z-shaped cutouts. Adapted for 2022, the RB18 has a horseshoe-like cutout, creating a split level within the floor where the rear section leads with a dropped edge. This also includes a gurney-like flap on the front parts, where the side pod channels have also been altered throughout the season for optimal airflow. When it comes to the underside of the RB18's floor, the team decided to ditch the conventional shapes that you'd expect to see. For example, the floor's bow section has some unexpected contouring that works in tandem with the forward strake. We've seen this design used since by Red Bull's rivals along with the staggered boat tail design at the rear of the floor. And there's also the ice skate solution seen here which has since found its way onto both the Ferrari and the Alpine cars. And now onto the brake cooling, an area Red Bull updated multiple times in the opening phase of the season. With the size of the wheel rims increasing from 13 to 18 inches, the brake discs have grown in diameter too, now measuring around 50mm more. Along with this, cooling holes are no longer permitted in the brake pads, impacting airflow and heat exchange amounts. In response, Red Bull and several rivals created an internal brake disc fairing which isolates the brake disc inside the much larger drum and alters the passage of air to help moderate temperatures. The original design chose the insulation packing that surrounded the inner face of the disc, later replaced by a carbon fibre panel. The fairing and the brake calipers also changed colour throughout the season, due to a thermal coating to aid heat transfer. Onto the externals and starting with the bodywork, in the RB18 side pods and engine cover saw multiple updates throughout the season, looking to balance cooling and aerodynamics. The biggest change came at the British Grand Prix when the team introduced the solution seen elsewhere on the grid. The shelf-like shoulder section, say that in a hurry, extends rearwards from the halo and cockpit transition for two reasons, to act as an upper ledge for airflow to follow and as a divisional line for lower flow structures. The team quickly updated again in Austria where it opened up the rear of the engine cover while also dropping the end of the shark fin. More changes came in Belgium, deepening the bodywork between the engine cover shelf and the side pod drop-off. But what about the wings, I hear you ask? And in response to the FIA's goal of reducing wing performance, Red Bull repeatedly developed their wings to extract as much performance as they could, creating a balance between downforce generation, balancing the car and flow conditioning. Red Bull repeatedly updated their front wing upper flap on several occasions depending on the circuit characteristics. Notable change came in Australia as the end plate dive plane was changed to an S-shaped variant, invoking a different pressure gradient response. Red Bull has also been proactive with its beam wing arrangement. Having started the season with a unique approach, a stacked biplane arrangement, it quickly began trimming it down. Two polar opposite configurations have been seen for circuits requiring the most and the least downforce. 
For the lower downforce venues, Red Bull has opted to remove the upper of the two wing elements, while in Hungary a new, more conventional design appeared. Owing to the RB18 perhaps being the most efficient in the field, the team hasn't really chased a low downforce wing design, even for Monza. In fact, it even abandoned trimming the upper flaps trailing edge to reduce drag when it created a similar DRS oscillation issue that the team had faced towards the end of 2021. But at the end of the day, it's no surprise that the RB18 has all but dominated the 2022 calendar, if you ignore those DNFs at the beginning of the season, of course. It's no wonder that the standings currently look the way they do. Driver talent does have a huge role to play there, but no one can deny that the Red Bull's RB18 is a technical force to be reckoned with. If they can carry over the strength into 2023 and beyond, we could be seeing the start of a new Red Bull-dominated era.